many attempts to make reconciliation and to establish a central authority in Somalia. But unfortunately, what's complicating this situation in Somalia is that the Somalis are not left to resolve their problems on their own. Other countries are intervening in the affairs of Somalia. Potentially, the elders of Somalia could have been able to sort things out and establish peace and order, but external intervention is also making things complicated. So unfortunately, Somalia today is in complete disintegration. And that's why you see this problem of piracy. Today everybody talks about piracy. Nobody remembers Somalia when the people were dying from hunger and suffering. But now Somalia becomes important when piracy becomes rampant in the region and piracy is happening because there is no central government and there is no central authority. Well, strategically, the, the area is a very, very important area. The Babel Mandeb, uh, known as the, uh, the and, and also the Red Sea, the Swiss Canal, it is a very, very important region, uh, strategically important speaking. Uh, the Russians and the Americans during the Cold War era uh, were uh, competing to take control of the region. So strategically, it's a very important area, and, uh, and, and because of that, it has been always the, uh, the, the subject of uh, international rivalry. Uh, recently, and during the Cold War, Russia and the uh, United States, before that, the Portuguese and the Ottomans, and, and every superpower was trying to have an influence in the region. So, yes, strategically it's a very important area and that's why you see so much intervention from uh, other powerful nations. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, the Somalian piracy, uh, as a Muslims, uh, we, do we have to criticize them? Like, because the Westerns and the, the, some uh, country, you know, they're going through by free, you know, like they don't do nothing. Like, uh, do we have to, as a Muslim, we have to criticize them as a piracy? And uh, my another question, the second one is in Eritrea, uh, the language, the second language, it has a same, like the uh, Tigrinian, it's Arabic. As, uh, as we know, as a history, that, uh, like before, like, uh, the, the kings, you know, they don't have that much uh, Arabic language. You know? And uh, how come, you know, when was that this Arabic language? Okay, so I guess there are two questions here. Is The first question is about piracy. Now, uh, to my understanding, as a Muslim, piracy is piracy, and piracy is wrong. And there is no justification for that. And I don't think any sensible Somali would agree to this. It's a situation that has been created by desperation. It's a situation that has been created by lawlessness. So uh, it's not uh, entirely to be blamed upon the Somali uh, people. It is the failure of the international community to help the Somalis establish central authority in their own country. But as a Muslim, we don't condone piracy or any, uh, any act of that nature uh, in any circumstances. It goes against our values and our principles. The second question was about the Arabic language in, in, in Eritrea. Now, Arabic language is not the main language in, in many of these countries in, 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 in the Horn of Africa, in Somalia, the other main language is Somali. In Djibouti, there is Afar, there is Somali. In Ethiopia, there is a multitude of languages. In 
in Eritrea there are many languages, but uh, in, in Eritrea in particular, the western uh, part of Eritrea is very close to Sudan, and, uh, and also the eastern part of Eritrea is very close to Saudi Arabia, and accordingly, Arabic language is more spoken, not as a first language, but as a second language, in many parts of, of Eritrea. So the closer you are to the Red Sea or the closer you are to the Sudan, you'd find people more familiar with, with the Arabic language. And that's why in the Eritrean constitution in the, of the 1950s, the Arabic language was declared as the second official language of the country. The problem was there were several hundred Somalis beside the sea. But the normal food was in the sea, fishing. When the fishing was occupied by other fishers, you know, or the uh, big ships, but they removed everything from there. Yeah. So those people beside there, beside there were very hungry. And there's no Somali government, there's no Somali government today. Then they start going to the sea, and they have seen some of them were killed in the sea by uh, hot water. The people organized by themselves and tried to stop that thing, to war, at least to get some fish there. If it's impossible, then after that, they start to do this thing. So this piracy now is something more, it is not about something like a, a piracy, it's something like self-defense. They want food, and their food is in the sea. So they have to get their food from them, they protect, then they are protecting. If there is a system, they will come out and they will get food. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the brother is uh, clarifying that uh, part of uh, what led to what's known as piracy today is that there were, uh, because Somalia doesn't have a central authority, other, com other countries were coming and stealing the fish from the coastal area of, of Somalia. So, in, in, in either way or shape or form, what's happening in Somalia is the result of the international community failing to take its responsibility and to help the Somalis establish uh, a central authority uh, in, the, in the country. And one thing also I should mention here, uh, because there is no central authority today in Somalia, some countries are dumping their uh, nuclear waste or, uh, or environmentally dangerous waste in the, in, the coast, in the coast of Somalia, which is very annoying and, and very disturbing. Uh, I will be taking only one question from that girl, then uh, I will wrap up the program, inshallah. Uh, well, she's asking me that I didn't say much about Djibouti. Well, Djibouti is, is of course the tiniest of all the four countries. It only has half a million of population. Uh, it's mostly Somalis, but uh, they, they also have uh, a significant percentage of uh, what's known as the Afar. Uh, it's a predominantly Muslim country. It's primarily protected by, by the French. It's a small country and uh, uh, potentially it could be swallowed by any of the neighbors because of the various conflicts happening. So the French has, uh, they have a very strong presence in Djibouti and, uh, uh, and they have uh, a military base uh, it's a country that has very limited resources, but interestingly enough, it's the most peaceful and most uh, uh, orderly functioning uh, country in the region. <laughs>